Big changes are coming for the car market industry, and I'm surprised that not many people are talking about it. Today's new cars are selling for a fortune, and even used ones too. For example, the used car that I own went up $20,000 in value since I've bought it, and I put more than 5,000 miles on it. Now, as we know from prior experience, things that come quickly don't usually stick around long, and from my point of view, it looks like the car market might have just popped. Now, before we continue, I'd like to just make a few little changes to make the video feel a little bit more at home. Ah, uh, that's better. Now let's get into the video. What's going on YouTube? Hayden back. This year, used car prices rose 45% to an average of nearly $26,000 in January compared to a year prior. Obviously, we can all agree this is not sustainable in today's economy or any economy for that matter. But what is sustainable is smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This helps me know you want to see more videos like this and lets YouTube know the same. Now, speaking of sustainable economies, let's talk about ours for a second. You see, the Atlanta Fed's GDP gauge now sees the second quarter at negative 2.1%, which if accurate means the US will be declared in a recession since January of 2022, at least statistically. Because remember, a recession is considered two negative GDP quarters, and we've already had a first from January to March. You see, the reason car dealerships are price gouging new and used cars is because of extremely high consumer demand, mega inflation rates mixed with supply shortages for, you know, chips, as well as new vehicles and the labor shortage. The US inflation hit a 40-year high of 8.6%, and major chip manufacturers say the shortage could stretch into 2023. What's even more overlooked is even though the unemployment rate is also decreasing, we still have less people in the labor force compared to before the lockdowns happened in 2020. Remember, unemployed workers in most states are eligible for up to 26 weeks of benefits, and by now most people have met that limit. Now, the Fed's response to our soaring inflation was to raise interest rates, something they have historically done during rough times. And this is nothing new, but this indirectly means getting a car loan won't be as easy as it was back in 2021. So much so that since the start of the pandemic in late 2019, the terms of the average new car loans have changed considerably. After 2019, the approval rates have increased slightly, terms have lengthened, and the average down payment has shrunk. At this point, you can now finance a car for 10 years or 120 months, which is a terrible idea. Auto loans and leases, general purpose credit cards, and personal loans were up 39% in April of 2021, compared to the same period in 2020. What's worse is more new car loans were taken out in March of 2021 than in any prior year, dragging the monthly car payment up with it. And even though it is still historically easy to get a car loan, it's growing harder to qualify, falling by 0.8% in May of this year. This is most likely due to the rise in interest rates set by the feds. Remember, since the lockdown was lifted, people have been dying to leave their homes and spend the cash the government gave them. And by no surprise, they did just that. Consumer demand is running rampant in the US during a time when we should be saving. And America Americans have increased their impulse spending by 14% in 2022 compared to 2021. Now, the average person spends $314 per month on impulse purchases from $276 in 2021 and $183 in 2020. It has gotten so out of hand that the personal savings rate or the amount of disposable income that people save was just 4.4% in April, the lowest rate recorded since September of 2008. And you guys hopefully remember what happened then because it's extremely similar to what's happening now. What people didn't realize is how quickly consumer demand would rise by spending their freshly printed cash. This led to a massive increase in inflation we are still currently dealing with today. This also caused the middle and lower class to have little to no savings while prices on essential items continue to soar. Food rose 11.9% in the past 12 months, gas rose practically 50%, and utilities like fuel oil rose 106%, pipe gas 30%, and electricity up 12%, and don't even get me started on the rent increases. With the middle class focusing on paying down essential bills, those non-essential ones like car payments are starting to fall behind, and Wall Street even began to see borrowers with bad credits defer on their credit loans. Past due subprime auto loans specifically climbed to its highest rate since April of 2020. These are the auto loans that are tailored to people with low credit scores in the range of 580 to 619. Now, the subprime auto loans also have a higher interest rate than regular auto loans due to the perceived increased riskiness of the borrower. What's crazier is all car car loan defaults rose 8.8% in February, a 15-year high, according to Equifax. And this also puts borrowers who defer on their car loans in a vulnerable spot for repossessions. Even the government warned against a possible wave of car repossessions this year. For decades, the math behind a car loan has stayed the same. When borrowers kind of fall behind on their car payments, lenders give them a grace period to catch up on payments. And they did this because it raised more money than the lender could get by seizing the car and reselling it. But used car 
prices have increased dramatically today over the last year, which means lenders can often make more money now by seizing the car immediately and reselling a car than by giving the borrower a chance to catch up. We're also now beginning to see the sales of cars slow down as inflation worsens. Car sales typically spike up in April as people receive their tax refunds, but this year not only have people not received their tax refunds, retail sales also declined by 13%. This happened between April and March of this year, and overall retail sales are down 21% from last year. Used car inventories also began to increase as well. And don't worry if you haven't received your refund from the IRS, you are one of 21 million people who also haven't received theirs either. Taxpayers on average are expecting to see a refund of over $3,000 this year, and generally if your refund is delayed more than 45 days, the IRS will pay interest on that total. What's even better is starting July 1st, the interest increases from 4% to 5% compounded daily. And moving on, with sales slowing due to high prices and low inventory, it's only a matter of time before car dealers lower the prices on their used cars. Sales of new cars in May actually fell 31% from 2021. Honda, for instance, had sales on the Accord drop 58%, while the Civic fell 77% and the Honda CRV down 59%. More than likely, this is probably due to the shortage in new vehicle productions, but I'm sure people also aren't buying the ones that are available either. Now, hopefully by now you can begin to paint a picture as to what exactly is happening. Will car loans be the next mortgage crisis? Back in 2007, we had something called the subprime mortgage meltdown. Similar to the subprime auto loans, subprime mortgages were given to approved people with low credit scores and problems with debt. The subprime mortgage meltdown was the sharp increase in high-risk mortgages that went into default beginning in 2007, contributing to the most severe recession in decades. The housing boom of the mid-2000s combined with low interest rates prompted many lenders to offer home loans to individuals with poor credit. When the real estate bubble bursted, many borrowers weren't able to make payments on those subprime mortgages. Now here's where things get interesting. Similar to today, there are 107 million Americans out of 323 million who have car loans. So almost a third are driving in vehicles they don't own outright. And all those millions of people owe 1.2 trillion in auto loans. In 2007, the value of the American subprime mortgages happened to be an estimate of 1.3 trillion as of March of 2007, similar to what we're seeing today with auto loans. The only difference is back in 2007, there were seven and a half million outstanding subprime mortgages. Back then, investors put a ton of money into securities backed by housing mortgages. This meant investors lent their money to banks to fund mortgage loans. And with the outlook that, you know, those mortgages would be repaid and the investors would get filthy rich. As we know, this never happened and billions of money was lost and the housing market fell 30%. Now, a very similar thing is happening with car loans. Investors are piling into auto loan-backed securities and flooding the market, all while there has been a sudden burst in delinquencies and defaults. There was even a study done by Consumer Reports, which found some pretty scary overlapping information in the poorly regulated auto loan market, similar to the 07 mortgage loan market. The investigation found that a credit score doesn't necessarily dictate the terms of the loan offered. Some high credit scores get high-priced loans, and many borrowers are put into loans they might not be able to afford. They even found that underwriting standards are often lax and delinquencies are quite common. Gives you chills, right? And we know what happened to the real estate market after all those loans couldn't be repaid. It popped. Well, we're seeing the same upward tick on delinquent car loan payments today. Now, I don't think the car market bubble will have the same severity as the housing market did on our economy, but it does still have a crucial role. It makes up about 3% of our GDP. All I'm saying is it's definitely not the time to be purchasing a new or even a used car unless it's a dire emergency. Eventually, the supply chain shortage will be fixed and new cars will begin making their way to dealerships, causing the price gouging to stop and used cars to drop substantially in price. So once again, all I'm I'm saying is keep your eyes open and aware of what's going on. If you are currently in a car loan yourself, it's probably better to have a fixed rate because by the way the car market is heading, things are about to get real bumpy real soon. So I hope your suspension is good. With that all being said, that about wraps up today's video. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode. Peace.